Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson Chapter 7 Spirit It is essential to a true theory of nature and of man that it should contain somewhat progressive uses that are exhausted or that may be and facts that end in the statement cannot be all that is true of this brave lodging wherein man is harbored and wherein all his faculties find appropriate and endless exercise and all the uses of nature admit of being summed in one which yields the activity of man an infinite scope through all its kingdoms to the suburbs and outskirts of things it is faithful to the cause whence it had its origin it always speaks of spirit it suggests the absolute it is a perpetual effect it is a great shadow pointing always to the sun behind us the aspect of nature is devout like the figure of jesus she stands with bended head and hands folded upon the breast the happiest man is he who learns from nature the lesson of worship of that ineffable essence which we call spirit he that thinks most will say least we can foresee god in the coarse and as it were distant phenomena of matter but when we try to define and describe himself both language and thought desert us and we are as helpless as fools and savages that essence refuses to be recorded in propositions but when man has worshipped him intellectually the noblest ministry of nature is to stand as the apparition of god it is the organ through which the universal spirit speaks to the individual and strives to lead back the individual to it when we consider spirit we see that the views already presented do not include the whole circumference of man we must add some related thoughts three problems are put by nature to the mind what is matter whence is it and where to the first of these questions only the ideal theory answers idealism saith matter is a phenomenon not a substance idealism acquaints us with the total disparity between the evidence of our own being and the evidence of the world's being the one is perfect the other incapable of any assurance the mind is a part of the nature of things the world is a divine dream from which we may presently awake to the glories and certainties of day idealism is a hypothesis to account for nature by other principles than those of carpentry and chemistry yet if it only deny the existence of matter it does not satisfy the demands of the spirit it leaves god out of me it leaves me in the splendid labyrinth of my perceptions to wander without end then the heart resists it because it balks the affections in denying substantive being to men and women nature is so pervaded with human life that there is something of humanity in all and in every particular but this theory makes nature foreign to me and does not account for that consanguinity which we acknowledge to it let it stand then in the present state of our knowledge merely as a useful introductory hypothesis serving to apprise us of the eternal distinction between the soul and the world but when following the invisible steps of thought we come to inquire whence is matter and where to many truths arise to us out of the recesses of consciousness we learn that the highest is present to the soul of man that the dread universal essence which is not wisdom or love or beauty or power but all in one and each entirely is that for which all things exist and that by which they are that spirit creates that behind nature throughout nature spirit is present one and not compound it does not act upon us from without that is in space and time but spiritually or through ourselves therefore that spirit that is the supreme being does not build up nature around us but puts it forth through us as the life of the tree puts forth new branches and leaves through the pores of the old as a plant upon the earth so a man rests upon the bosom of god he is nourished by unfailing fountains and draws at his need inexhaustible power who can set bounds to the possibilities of man 
once inhale the upper air being admitted to behold the absolute natures of justice and truth and we learn that man has access to the entire mind of the creator is himself the creator in the finite this view which admonishes me where the sources of wisdom and power lie and points to virtue as to the golden key which opes the palace of eternity carries upon its face the highest certificate of truth because it animates me to create my own world through the purification of my soul the world proceeds from the same spirit as the body of man it is a remoter and inferior incarnation of god a projection of god in the unconscious but it differs from the body in one important respect it is not like that now subjected to the human will its serene order is inviolable by us it is therefore to us the present expositor of the divine mind it is a fixed point whereby we may measure our departure as we degenerate the contrast between us and our house is more evident we are as much strangers in nature as we are aliens from god we do not understand the notes of birds the fox and the deer run away from us the bear and tiger rend us we do not know the uses of more than a few plants as corn and the apple the potato and the vine is not the landscape every glimpse of which hath a grandeur a face of him yet this may show us what discord is between man and nature for you cannot freely admire a noble landscape if laborers are digging in the field hard by the poet finds something ridiculous in his delight until he is out of sight of men